Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. What's that? This cool robe? Don't worry about it. It was a birthday gift. I haven't worn it yet, and I thought this video would be the right video for it because today we're talking about summer reading recommendations. So, I don't know, this felt a little ocean breeze, you know? <laughs> Mainly because it's blue and it feels like the ocean to me, so. That's that. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, today's video is a summer reading recommendations video. This came requested in my last video where I asked for video suggestions. Basically what's going on is I have the interest and the time to film, but nothing in this noodle. Like nothing of merit. Like there's just nothing in here. Anyway, thank you for all the recommendations. Before we get into the books, one last thing. I have a fun piece of news and then also a little bit of a bummer piece of news. I mean, it was time, but anyway. The first piece of news is that Ana Luisa, the beautiful jewelry company, is having a site-wide spring sale. 20% off everything, which includes my earrings. Hello, these like pearl drop earrings, super fun, super flirty, love them. And they match the robe, which we love. Um, but then also my necklace that I made with them over a year ago. So that's the fun news. The bummer news is that we've decided it's time to call it quits on the hand necklace. So we were both just feeling like it had its moment and now it's time for the earrings to really shine. So if you would like to get your hands on, your hands on <laughs> a hand necklace, um, it's going into final sale now. So hopefully you're able to pick one up. Hopefully you'll love it if you get it. And um, yeah, so they're having a cool spring sale. Hope you take advantage of it. I know I will be, so anyway. Let's get into the books now, my friends. These are books that feel like summer, that feel like this robe, okay? That's the vibe we're going for today. <laughs> okay, um, first things first, we're gonna go with kind of the most obvious book that feels like summer, and that is Seven Days in June. I raved about this book a lot last year, so I'm sure you've all heard me talk about it before, but not only do I just think it's a really wonderful romance, it also literally has June in the title and it takes place during a summer. So, or actually not just a single summer, but it, the, the timeline is like summertime. So this romance is not always a happy one. It's not always perfect, but it's tragically beautiful, in my opinion. I also think that the main character, like the main woman that we're following throughout the story, has such an interesting dynamic of being realistic and heartbroken and also super personable and hilarious. I feel like the author did a great job at bringing the char character to life and making you feel like you're really hanging out with someone and you're getting the sad parts and the happy parts and the successful parts and the tragic parts. And I just thought it was really, really well done. And if you haven't read it already, I think it's perfect for summertime. So there you go. All right, next up, we have a book that I read over a year ago at this point. And I remember when I read it, it was a little all over the place. It was a little chaotic, but ultimately I remember saying like, I can't tell if it's brilliant or if it's overwhelming, and I think it's both. So that is trust exercise. The reason why I'm recommending it for this video is because it takes place during like the end of a semester in school and then a summer, and then it continues through there. But a lot of drama for the main characters happens over a summertime, like end of school year, summertime, and then as they continue through school. So. I just remember kind of being like, okay, we're in high school, but it's not a young adult. Um, there's drama that goes on. There's like, it's weird because it's like high school drama that feels really significant for the main characters. But as an adult reading it, I was like, yes, this would be all consuming if this was going on in my life when I was in high school. So I thought it was really good. I mean, it like follows this, these like this cast of students in a drama class in high school and 
two of the classmates have this like instant romantic connection, but things go really, really wrong for them. And so again, it kind of touches on summer breaks and then it goes out of summer breaks and it, ah, it just, I remember being very intrigued and entranced by it, even though I couldn't fully figure out if I loved it or not, you know? And I think that that was, it was a good way to start 2021 and it really got me thinking. So if you haven't read it, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. I think so at least. <laughs> All right, next up, let's give you a classic. And the reason why I'm giving you a classic is number one, I have to read this this summer. So I'm kind of like, join me. <laughs> um, actually, maybe I should do a whole reading vlog around this book because it is a big bitch. But that is George Eliot's Middlemarch. Now, this isn't the most fun for summer. It's not like it's gonna help you escape and like <laughs> be this like really quick, fast paced book. But I feel like the atmosphere is very social drama and gossip. And so if like you're in between, right, it's one of those books where it's so big that if you're in school and it's not assigned to you, you're never going to read it, which is why I'm recommending it to you now. Because it's like, if you've got the time and it's always been on your radar, then why not give it a go this summer? And also, if you read it, then I will read it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I uh, read this a couple years ago for my degree, and I wrote a whole paper on it, and I actually presented on that paper at a conference in Chicago, which was like in like the height of my academic career. It's all been downhill from there, but um, anyway, <laughs> um, I just, I really enjoyed this book. I, you know, I annotated this book. I, I dug into this book um, and it's just, it's a lot of drama. It's a lot of gossip and it's just a book that you're not gonna read unless you have the time. And so if you have the time this summer, let's read it together. That's my final pitch. Join me in this chaotic and gossipy social book. Great. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a book that's very near and dear to my heart. It's usually sitting right there on my bookshelf, but it's not. <laughs> and that is Lizzie and Dante. I love this book. <laughs> I've loved this book since I read it last summer, and I was reading it when I was spending some time in San Diego with my brother and his wife. And so just reading it brings me back to a really happy time uh, because that, I needed that trip at that moment. And so when I was reading it, I was just kind of on cloud nine. I don't know, I don't know. Um, but I mean, obviously it's Scream Summer, the cover. This is one of my favorite covers of all time. Um, and it all takes place like on the Italian coastline. What I will say <laughs> is as beautiful as the cover may be, it is a tragic book. It is a book that I cried to, like shaking, crying because of how bad it hurt. I mean, there are definitely happy moments in it and the romance that's taking place is really romantic and it's an older love story. So it's just um, just these people that kind of have lived full lives and now they meet kind of in their, in their midlife or even when they're a little older. And so they're kind of like, oh wow, these feelings of kind of butterflies and, and first love, but I've already had a first love, you know? Um, it was, so that was really sweet. Ultimately, it is not a happy book, so keep that in mind, but it does really evoke summertime, Italian coastline, ocean, swimming, sunbathing, like super fun. And the cover just screams, <laughs> just screams summer. So I love this book so much. And if you read it, let me know what you think. Okay, next up, we have a book that I actually finished this month. So I haven't fully talked about it on my channel yet, but that is The Good Left Undone. This is an historical fiction novel that takes place during World War II, but not just like Germany and France, which is what a lot of the historical fiction I've read focuses on. It actually focuses a lot on Italy and Scotland. 
very interesting in my opinion. So you do kind of get that Italian coastline, beautiful ocean and coast and all those kinds of things. But then you also travel to like Scotland during I think a couple different seasons. And so you even get kind of like, you just kind of get summer feelings in different countries, which I thought was fun. Um, I will say, you know, I mean, it is a historical fiction, so it's not always a super happy and positive book. There is a lot of loss and a lot of grief, but there is romance throughout the book. And so I felt like that also helped it feel more like summer. And I read a lot of this at the Rose Garden earlier this month or end of last month. And so it just felt very summery to me, right? <laughs> more springy, but for the purpose of this video, very summery. <laughs> so um, yeah, that is, uh, you know, historical fiction, World War II, Scotland, Italy, a little bit of France, but mainly Scotland and Italy. Um, and you know, it spans perspectives and it follows different women in a family, which you know I love. So there you go. Next up, we have a book that I read last month. So I'm not gonna say too much about it, but I think that it is an excellent book for summer and it just came out and that is Memphis. This is a book that follows multiple women's perspectives within the same family and their relationship to the city of Memphis. So it follows a granddaughter, a daughter, and the sister. So like the aunt of the daughter. Um, so two sisters, a daughter, and then a grandmother. So it kind of focuses on the four main women in this family. And I thought it was incredible. It was really, really so well done. Writing was fantastic. And again, I just love a book that transcends family members and time and just shows different perspectives on a family dynamic. So this just came out. I thought it was excellent. And I think it's great to read this summer. Speaking of more family perspective centric type of summer books, we have Sharks in the Time of Saviors. I read this last summer. I thought it was phenomenal. It takes place not just in Hawaii, although that is a major plot point in the book, um, but just a lot of the characters find themselves near the ocean or by the ocean. I mean, the whole plot takes off after one of the children in the family falls into the ocean and then a shark saves the child, like puts it in its jaws and delivers it back to his family. So, um, I mean, very ocean, very summery, um, and just really, really intriguing. Again, we have like, basically the three siblings are your main characters. And so you're seeing like what it's like to be the youngest in the family, the middle child, the oldest child, and where each of them end up in the world, right? Because they do leave Hawaii for a while and then you find out where they where they go. And it just felt very, very based in nature. Again, lots of ocean, really cool shark stuff going on. So anyway, that is Sharks in the Time of Saviors. The next book I have to recommend for the summer is this book called The Guide, which is a book that I read kind of towards the end of last year. I don't think I ever really talked about it, but this is a book that is a little relevant <laughs> during our current pandemic state. Um, I know things are a little different than they were even six months ago, but in this book, basically, there is the world is overtaken by a virus and the only really safe place in um, I think it's Colorado, is this like fishing villa. Um, it's like this fishing resort. And so only the super rich can go, like can they afford to go there and fish there. Um, but like you have to go through like this rigorous thing so that everyone is healthy and no one is gonna spread the virus anywhere. So I think they might've even called the virus COVID. So it felt very real, okay? Um, and so you've just got a bunch of rich people fishing, but then some pretty scary things start happening. So um, our main character is hired to work at this fishing villa. Um, and then like things start moving around and there's cameras watching him at all times. And 
people are going through his stuff and he's hearing like gunshots places that there shouldn't be gunshots and it just turns out to be a pretty thrilling book trying to figure out like what's really going on at this fishing villa um and i'll and i'll just tell you this without any spoilers nothing good is happening at this fishing villa Something really gross actually is happening at this fishing villa. It's not the most summery, like the most vacation, fun, relaxing, um, but everyone at the fishing villa is on vacation, <laughs> which feels like summer. And also people are fishing and it's like at a lake and it's, you know, out in the trees and it's warm outside. So I feel like it's a good, it's just a good genre shift if you're in the mood for something thrilling, but also kind of atmospheric for summer. I feel like this one's good. Um, and trust me when I say I did not guess the end. I didn't absolutely love this book, so I'm not gonna say it's like a perfect five out of five thriller. I think I actually would have given it like a three out of five, but ultimately it is summary and it is really fast paced. Like I think I finished it in like a day and a half. So even though it wasn't perfect to me, it's still, it's like a great distraction. If you're just looking for a book to like take you out of life for a little bit over the summer, then this one will do it for you. And the mystery element is interesting, even if it's not perfect. So, <laughs> okay, that was a glowing review. <laughs> All right, next up, we have a book that I haven't technically finished yet. I'm still reading it, but it's giving me very summery vibes. And that is My Policeman, which is getting adapted into a film right now. Um, again, I'm not finished with this yet, so I can't really give a review on it. But so far, I mean, a lot of it takes place on a coast, in the ocean. I mean, literally the way that two people are starting to get to know each other is by swimming lessons. <laughs> So we've got that, we've got a pier, we've got kind of a boardwalk type of feel to it. So at least for now, this is giving me summer, but it remains to be seen how I feel about the book at the end. I just thought it'd be worth mentioning because I picked it up with the intention of like a summery feeling. And so far it is giving me that. So there you go. <laughs> All right, next up, I'm going to recommend two different memoirs. Now, neither of these are very summery, but if you're feeling like, oh, I want to read a memoir this summer and like, what are some of your favorites, Noelle? I would highly recommend Bossy Pants by Tina Fey because it follows like her life through comedy. And also the cover is just very summery because it's yellow. Um, so it's just, I don't know, it's like funny and it's super quick and... I felt like it was fun to just kind of like be with someone's comedy career for a little bit. So that was fun. Um, and then also crying in H Mart because I won't stop screaming the praises for this book from the rooftops. Um, this doesn't really give summer vibes. It's just that I think it's an excellent memoir and I think that it's getting a lot of attention over the last year or so because it deserves every ounce of hype and every ounce of excitement around it. I thought it was fantastic and it is definitely gonna make like a top five books of 2022 for me. So I think it's excellent and it just explores um, grief and a mother-daughter relationship and food, cooking, recipes, cultural identity through food. So I thought it was excellent. So those are two memoirs that if you're looking for a memoir this summer, you can't go wrong with either of those, in my opinion. All right, next up, we have a sci-fi. Where did that come from? I don't know. Also, if you see any reflections, um, there is a bird on our birdhouse outside and the birdhouse spins um, and it's reflective. So the light keeps shining in here. So if you see that, that's what's going on. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, what was I saying? Sci-fi, yes. I have to recommend The Martian. It's been a couple years since I've read The Martian, but I believe I read it either in spring or summer, but it takes place on Mars. So it's all about one man's journey on Mars and his um, dedication to surviving. I feel like he's abandoned or he's the only one left on a crew of people, but he's alone on Mars and he has to figure out how to survive. And so, you know, 
the planet itself is a hot one, from what I remember, and uh, it's just funny, and it's kind of out of this world, and it was a really quick read, and it's a book, I mean, it was made into a movie, so it's super, super popular, but I feel like because Project Hail Mary came out, that's the book we're all talking about in terms of sci-fi, and yet The Martian, I feel like, is going to be a classic sci-fi for years to come. And it was hilarious. It was just really, really fun, really fast paced. And you root for the main character the whole time. You're like, God damn, I hope he survives because this is not looking good. I think it's on a hot planet. Mars is hot, right? <laughs> I think, <laughs> okay. I'm not a scientist, friends. I just know that I enjoyed it. And I think it's a good summer wreck, okay? Okay. A book that I will be talking a lot more about in my <laughs> May wrap up, but of course I'm gonna mention it now, is Book Lovers. I read this for the first time in December, I believe, or November, and it came out this month in May. And this book has my entire heart. It is kind of like a perfect romance to me. I, if you don't love it, if you didn't love it, that's totally fine, difference of opinion. But for me, it kind of checks all the boxes that I want in a romance. And um, I reread it while I was in Amsterdam and could not put it down. I knew how it ended and could not put it down. <laughs> so um, I just feel like this is the perfect, I'm laying on a beach and I want to escape. Like I want a book that just takes me away or again, you're going on a road trip and you just want to get lost in a story. Oh my God. And the audiobook is narrated by Julia Whalen. So um, if you do decide to listen to it as an audiobook, um, you will not be disappointed, at least in my opinion, because I love Julia Whalen. Um, but yeah, Book Lovers is awesome. Also, Emily Henry, just in general, like Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation, very summery vibes. This one takes place in like a little um, small town and uh, it's just really cute and really romantic. And I just love it so much. So that's Book Lovers. And you know, her other books as well are definitely very summer feeling. Anyway, so those are some books that I recommend you maybe pick up this summer. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this list, but if you have any to add of your own, please leave them down in the comments. I'm always interested in books that take place in the ocean or near an ocean or just, I'm a mood reader 100%. So if you have any summery feeling books, I would love to read them. Um, I could even do a whole reading vlog on them. So yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.